Can I feel a responsibility to consider the occupant of the, of the womb as a candidate member of society uh, in the future, and thus to say that it cannot be only the responsibility of the woman uh, to decide upon it, that it's a social question and an ethical and a moral one. And I say this as someone who has no supernatural beliefs. What are those who disagree with you missing? They simply refuse to accept that it's an unborn child? Well, actually, no, there's been progress on that front. You almost never hear now, which I can remember hearing from some ultra-feminists, that um, the occupant of the womb is simply a, an outgrowth or extrusion of the mother's body, such as an appendix might be, or even worse, a tumor. I've heard it right. compared to that. That, I notice, they don't say anymore. There's a good deal more um, reflection on that point. One of the most fascinating people in the entire abortion debate is my friend and colleague uh, Nat Hentoff, who is a writer and a civil libertarian, generally supports the right of women, always supports the right to choose, for example, the right to choose to read or write pornography. He's an atheist. He doesn't believe in God, doesn't believe in the soul uh, of a fetus, and yet he does not support a woman's right to choose abortion. Once the sperm and the egg meet and they find a sort of nesting place in the uterus, you now have a developing human being. It's not a kangaroo, it's not a giraffe, it's a human being. And that development in the womb until the person comes out is a continuing process. Therefore, if you kill it at any stage, first three weeks, first three months, you're killing a developing human there being. There are conflicting values. And taken in isolation, each of the values is quite legitimate. So the value of preserving human life, or for that matter, the life of any organism, uh, that, uh, uh, that is a value that we should accept. You shouldn't just go arbitrarily kill some animal because uh, it's fun to kill it. Uh, I th I, that's a reasonable value. On the other hand, most people will agree to swat a mosquito. Okay, well, that, uh, the idea that life is, should be valued has come into conflict with another value, uh, and we know what that one is. And that's commonly the case. Uh, the values that we hold are not absolute. Uh, they are always contingent. Uh, they conflict. Uh, and life is made up of decisions in complicated situations in cases of conflicting values. If you listen to just one in isolation, yeah, it may sound legitimate and, and maybe is, uh, but you have to ask what it means under particular conditions. So choice is legitimate, preserving life is legitimate. The Roman Catholic Church, because all, many, many churches claim to be Catholic, the Roman Catholic Church takes the view that there can be no trifling with the life of the unborn, and that the concept unborn child is, a, is a, not, a propaganda, not a propaganda concept, but a meaningful one, a real one, a true one, and that uh, deserves um, protection and tenderness. As it happens, I uh, agree with this view for materialist reasons. It seems to me obvious from the um, discoveries of, bi of biology and embryology that the concept unborn child is a real one. It's not just a dialectical. Right. It's, it's a materialist question to begin with. I mean, embryology is a materialist science, and the, even if you didn't think that before the recent discoveries about, say, the early viability of a, an unborn child or fetus, embryo, whatever you wish to call it, um, made, there was no question that it was alive. It wasn't just a, a jungle of cells or a tumor or an appendix, as some feminists used to refer to the unborn. In my, my memory, it was, said it, was, it was simply a growth on and of the woman's body, not a, a separate thing, not a living thing. Not the early feminists. The, the, the question, the question would resolves itself to me like this. It's obviously alive. There's an element of casuistry in asking, well, what kind of alive is it? I mean, if it's, if it's a life, it must be a human one. It can't be a non-human or inhuman one. So all these questions are decided um, that way. I'm not a pacifist. I don't think that there are no circumstances in which a, a human life can be taken or the balance of one life doesn't have to be measured by all kinds of uh, means against another. But I, I think that it's uh, e extraordinarily objectionable uh, to exclude the occupant of the womb from this as if they, they weren't uh, candidate members of a human race. Atheist opposition to abortion 
Um, mm. Tell me a little more about that. I mean, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to agree with it, but you, you, you feel that way. You think? Yeah, I think it is murder, though it might be second degree in, in many cases, but I realize it's a very difficult issue, and I sort of wanted to be a good card-carrying liberal, but I just couldn't. I thought... You know, if you go along this potential person who they're not actually persons because, well, then uh, then uh, neither are infants. And uh, I, I just couldn't come up with anything that wouldn't legitimate infanticide. Too. You know, maybe some of us are going to go off to heaven. I happen to think that's not true. I have called this in my own writings a future of value. If denying somebody their future of value is what makes it wrong to kill them, and this is because... We think that the misfortune of death for them is a denial of their future of value. Then fetuses have futures of value also because uh, a fetus's future will contain everything that Michael's future and my future, my future contain and a great deal of our past too. So uh, fetuses have futures like ours. And since f having, being denied one's future is uh, what makes it wrong to kill us, then abortion is wrong. I am an atheist, and that means that I don't believe in God. I don't believe in resurrection, either bodily or spiritual. I don't believe in a special providence. I don't believe in a future state, and I don't believe in anything supernatural. I also have concerns about certain moral beliefs of various atheists. So I myself um, take the view that abortion for example, is highly questionable, um, and I'm concerned that society is going down a route to, going towards a position where we have more and more abortions. It's considered basically a right of the mother without reference to the child um, to abort the fetus, and we're not in that position yet, but I'm concerned that we will move towards that position. Social justice is valued by religious and non-religious people alike. According to the Pew Center for Religion and Public Life, nearly a quarter of people between the ages of 18 and 29 practice no religion. We are more pro-life and less religious than ever before. That is the dynamic. And it is up to you to capture the enthusiasm of non-religious pro-lifers on your campus, because I promise you they are out there. So then are you opposed well, to uh, abortion? Hmm? Uh, Christopher, 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 oh, please. Christopher, so does, does that mean that you are, are you involved in the pro-life movement in that case? Um, I believe that the concept unborn child is a real concept, yes. Um, and I've had a lot of quarrels with uh, some of my fellow materialists and secularists on this point. I think that if the concept child means anything, the concept unborn child can be said to mean something. And actually all the discoveries of um, embryology, uh, which have been very considerable, in the last generation or so, and of viability, appear to confirm uh, that opinion, which is, I think it, it should be innate in everybody, is innate in the Hippocratic Oath, is instinct in anyone who's ever watched a sonogram, and so forth. So yes is my answer.